YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back and wow what a day today is for the NFL uh three teams make trades two big trades having to do with the NFL draft between the Dolphins and the 49ers and then the Dolphins and the Eagles with minutes within minutes later I mean absolutely wild was not expecting this during the Zach Wilson pro day on top of it uh, so absolutely wild. We broke it down as it happened on our Twitter. So if you're not following our Twitter, you're missing out. But I'm going to break down the details very quickly because I'm sure everyone knows them. Uh, and then I'm going to grade each team. And a lot goes into that, factors in how I come up with the grade. It is tough, though, because no players are actually involved in this. And we had one team, the Dolphins, trade twice. So it's absolute, absolute madness, and I absolutely love it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Full NFL coverage, talking mainly free agency right now, but updated mock drafts constantly. Going to have to get on a, a new one ASAP because of this trade. Uh, and the NFL draft, just full NFL draft content is right around the corner. It's my favorite time of the year. So join us for that. Check out walktomock.com. If you sign up, use code GOATHOUSE. Link pinned in the comments for anything that you need. Yeah, here's our Twitter, just keeping you guys updated. Yeah, just tweeted out that I was about to record this video. Just talk, I mean, I, I tweeted so many different things about this trade, you know. So you're, you're really missing out here. Um, you know, if you're not following our channel, our channel, just fully covering the NFL here. So trade number one, this goes down. Um, the 49ers trade up for the third overall pick as Zach Wilson's pro day is about to start. The Dolphins have the third pick, but then they trade back to the 12th overall pick, gain a third round pick this year, a 2020, 2022 first in a 2023 first can't even spit it out. So much went down here. Uh, and I have Trey Lance and Mac Jones pictured. Why? Because my thinking at the moment is it's actually probably going to be, we'll update my mock draft, get my final thoughts. I think it's going to be one of those two guys. I, I actually do. Justin Fields is currently my number three quarterback in the class. Um, but I view these guys more as, as a fit. But that's not the purpose of this video. Um, you know, it just... All the signs and the feeling that I get point towards many of those two guys. But that's not the purpose of this video. Uh, we'll get to that when the time is right in a separate video. I'm going to work on a mock draft right after this. So it's really excited about this trade. But uh, it's just interesting because they're showing John Lynch on NFL Network uh, you know, at the Zach Wilson Pro Day, BYU Pro Day, as this goes down. So that's pretty wild. Um, you would, you know, if we weren't so sure about Zach Wilson going to, you'd be certain it's Zach Wilson. Um but this kind of just shows how good the quarterback class is that a team is able to trade up for th the third overall pick because there's that just means there's three at least three quarterbacks that they would love to have. You know, if somehow Trevor Lawrence doesn't go one, you know, and he ends up at three, they would take him. Not going to happen. Same thing with Zach Wilson, and they like the QB three in this class as well. Whoever they have that as, so and there's a lot of people that were kind of just thinking people got too hyped about this quarterback class, but no, it, it is legit and proven right here. Um, but the Dolphins get a load of picks, an absolute load of picks. It's kind of the thing that they want multiple first round picks, you know, to start, I guess, in, 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 you know, any draft. So they're able to move and they kind of did that minutes later. We'll talk about that. Um, they moved back to 12 and yeah, you know, we talked about the other picks they got. They got really good value. You know, they move, I mean, 12 to, you know, the number three and the number 12 doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that is a pretty big difference in value. So they do need a lot in return, but they do get a lot. Two first round picks. The Niners won't be picking in the first round until 2024. Think about that. That's, that's something, that's something there. But first thought, you know, the Dolphins, I think I even tweeted something like this right after that, the, you know, they got um, a Sewell Jamar Chase debate is over. You know, the Dolphins are probably are, probably aren't going to get an elite prospect because they're at twelve. They can they have a shot at one slipping through. They're going to get a very good prospect, but they don't have a shot at, at the elite prospect. But then they made another move to come back up. So that would have been the downside of that, even though they got extremely good value. Um, and we're going to grade every team, all three teams in this. So we'll circle back to the Niners. But the Niners go up to get their quarterback. It kind of means that Deshaun Watson, even though I said. Uh, you know, me personally, I said it wasn't happening because it was just teams that would beat them out for Deshaun Watson in terms of value. He might not get traded at all. So the Niners go up and get their quarterback of the future here uh, is what is expected. So it looks like the top three picks will be quarterbacks unless the Jets pass on Zach Wilson for a different position and the 49ers will take Zach Wilson then. Uh, but then just moments later, 
The Dolphins make another deal. So they have the 12th pick. They went from 3-12, to 12 and they move up to 6 with the Philadelphia Eagles. Dolphins also pull a fifth. The way I look at this is they swapped a 4 for a 5, so that, that's the way to look at that. Uh, the Eagles moved up around there besides everything else. It's the easiest way to look at it. Um, Dolphins, six spots up. They get the six overall pick. The Eagles go back to 12. Again, they swap those picks. And then the Eagles get a 2022 first-round pick. Remember, the Dolphins just traded for a 2022 first from the 49ers. I think all of us assume that they use that, uh, but they actually sent their own. I'm thinking it's a win-win for both teams there. I'm thinking Eagles wanted the Dolphins pick over the 49ers, and I'm thinking the Dolphins wanted to keep their own pick. I think they're confident about themselves. They're banking on themselves to be better um, you know, then the 49ers, cause it's an upcoming team here. Uh, even though the Niners got a damn good roster now in position to get a quarterback. So I like the confidence there. I think it's a win-win there. You know, the Eagles got, I think got the pick that they wanted there. Maybe they already agreed on it. They're like, Hey, we're going to make this trade with the 49ers. I think that happened. I actually think that happened because John Lynch is standing at the pro day of BYU. And then moments later, this trade happens, you know, right. It doesn't just happen that quickly. So I think a lot of this was kind of set up for the most part. They just had to get the details down, the official agreements, get the NFL to uh, sign off on everything like they always do, um, you know, prove it. So, yeah, and the Eagles, the word is the Eagles, you know, wanted Zach Wilson. And that kind of, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are like, there's no way the Eagles want a quarterback because they have Jalen Hurts. And I, I talked about that on Twitter a long time ago. There's no logic behind that. It doesn't make any sense. If they can get better at the best position in football, the most important position in football, they're going to do it. They drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round last year. He's still, in a way, a prospect that they like. But if they can get better, they will. And that kind of proved that, that they wanted to get better with Zach Wilson. They just they just couldn't because they, they believe he's going to go second overall. So that tells us a lot there. Um, you know, that's good. They're not going to force a quarterback pick. That's fantastic. Makes sense. Everything makes sense there, in a way. Uh, even though I, I do think you could debate – you know, if one of those other quarterbacks was available at six, you know, surprising like a Fields that, I mean, he is a better, in a way, Hurts is still a prospect. Fields is a better prospect than him, but it's not the difference of Wilson in their eyes, and especially in terms of fit. So, um, you know, that wasn't surprising really at all. And uh, again, I did mention they get Miami's 2022 first out of it, so they move back. But that kind of takes them, you know, remember we talked about the Dolphins. They took themselves out of the elite prospect playmaker, we'll say, or offense lineman from 3 to 12. They put themselves back in. Did the Eagles take themselves out from 6 to 12? They kind of did. Uh, but now to grade them, I just want to start with the Dolphins because this is the plain and simple, the easiest one. Um, uh, the Dolphins are getting an A+. Plus. What they did here was fantastic. Honestly, if it was only the Niners trade, if they only made that trade, I pr it probably wouldn't have been an A+. Plus. I think I still would have liked it because they, I think they got really good value adding. You know, if, I, if you would have told me they would have got two first-round picks, uh, that would have made sense, but they wouldn't have got anything else. But they got a third-round pick on top of it. I know third's not you know, insane value, but it's something there. So that was pretty good. But then, you know, the downside, maybe, maybe I, why I wouldn't have had an A plus the ultimate grade is because they took themselves out of getting, um, an elite player. You know, if they could have got a very good one, who knows an elite guy could have dropped a little bit. Um, but then they make this deal and they move back up to six. So essentially they go from three to six. They move back three spots, three spots, uh, they gain a 2023 first. They're able to hang out of their 2022 first because they used another one, you know, their own because everybody knows. So they, they're not without a 2022 first, even though they, that, that plays a part as well. They don't lose a first round pick. They've actually gained. I mean, if you're going to move back from three to six, you better gain. So we can't applaud them for gaining for moving back, but they gained a 2023 first and they they really got a third round pick out of it, and there was a swap deal within there with within the deal with, with the Eagles, uh, minor you know four four or five swap. Um, so really, yeah, they they gained a first and they gained a third. Usually, a third this year on top of it. Usually, if you're gonna you know if you're gonna move back from three to six, you may gain a future first. Um, most likely, you're going to gain like a second, a third, maybe a fifth, you know, somewhere around there. They gain that future first and a third this year. Fantastic. They're back in position. I mean, they play this so perfectly, too, because, you know, you're making the deal with the Niners. You know the Niners. You're talking with them, but you just know anyways, just, just like we do, we do, that the Niners are going up for a quarterback. So that means quarterback's going one, very likely two, very likely three. We're we're close to guarantee. We can't really can't really guarantee anything when it comes to the draft besides the first pick. But 
it's close to a guarantee that three quarterbacks are going to be the first three picks and the Falcons pick four. It's possible that four quarterbacks can be gone in a row. Did the Falcons get screwed over by this? That's kind of the big question here. So they know that the playmakers or the offense linemen are going to get pushed back and they're still going to have the opportunity to get one of those guys uh, because they got back up to six and they still gained some great value. This is this is a very good job. You know, it's a very good job of the Dolphins. You, I mean, you get, you know, I'm not a Dolphins fan, but you get excited for teams that make big time moves like this. I mean, they easily can blow it. You know, if they overdraft a guy at six and they didn't get one of those elite playmakers, they're still going to get a very good player either way. At the end of the day, they're going to get better. Um, but there's a, maybe there's a shot they don't take one of the guys we think they're going to take. Um, you know, there, there could be a little list of guys that actually can take with that six pick. We talk about Jamar Chase, Penny Sewell, um, Devontae Smith, maybe Jalen Waddle. I don't know, but maybe uh, you could throw Rashawn Slater in there. Did I say Kyle Pitts? I can't remember. List of guys they can still take. Uh, and there's a good chunk of guys that'll still be a great pick if they take. So that's a good thing there. Uh, the 49ers, great. I actually changed this. There was one last thought I had that made me actually bump it up. Um, so I, f- I ended up with the B plus and I actually had it. Uh, lower than that, like I just said, uh, because there are some downsides to this for the 49ers deal, which they gave up two first round picks and a third round pick. They gave up a lot here. They gave up a ton. They won't be picking, uh, in the first round after this until 2024. I mean, they're picking third overall this year, but they won't pick in 2022, 2023 that, you know, you know, okay. So the, they gave up a lot of value. Gave up a lot of value, maybe a little more, but that's what kind of what it takes. If you, if you have to get up, it's kind of what it takes, even though it's a lot. Um, they won't be picking until 2024. That's a negative. We're trying to split up the positives and negatives here, starting with the negatives, and then because I'm going to show you why I brought it up here to a B plus, which is which is a good grade. Um, I kind of I'm feeling that they're going to take. You know, I, I feel like they they view Lance or Mac Jones as the best fits. Uh, I had scenarios where they got them at uh, at pick 12, uh, but if they, if you have to have this guy, if you have the quarterback, you of course move up. But did you have to move up that far? Essentially, did you have to give up that much to do this? I would say probably not, but maybe other teams wouldn't trade. But still, even if they wouldn't trade, you know, you had to kind of give up maximum. You had to move up the maximum amount for you know, one of those quarterbacks that some people had going a little later than three, you know, so th- those are the downsides there to the deal. So I had it kind of around the B minus range. Um, you know, that they feel like they're a quarterback away. That's a good thing. They're going to go up. But why I bumped, the main reason I bumped it up is one, when you see a draft class like this, where you can get a quarterback that would actually be quarterback one in quite a few draft classes, and when he's quarterback three in this class, you don't see that often. When are the 49ers picking 12th overall? When will they have the opportunity? Look at next year. What, what are they going to be picking? Most people, will probably, I'm not making a prediction here. Most people will probably predict that they're picking in the 20 somewhere. We'll just say that, just just for the example here. No prediction. Um, they would have to go from there all the way up, and that's next year with guys like Howell Rattler. This class is much much better. Those guys would be quarterback five around there in this class, unless some there's crazy improvement. Still good quarterbacks, but you get my point. Um, they had this rare opportunity right now, and, and they and they took it, and that really is a smart thing because who was going to be their quarterback in the future? You know, they were going to be in a worse situation. So that really bumps it up. They did give up a lot of value. They won't be picking till 2024 in the first round after this year. Did they have to move up that far to get these guys? Maybe they had to because no one else would trade, but it's 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 pretty far up. Uh, maybe they do end up taking a guy like Justin Fields who can, you know, you know, really who they pick really will decide. And I grade every single I, I grade the first round draft picks. Um, you know, I break down winners and losers the night of the draft when it ends and the next morning I grade every pick. So we'll break that down who they actually pick, but interesting stuff in the Eagles. Uh, I gave an A minus to originally, you know, first glance they, they moved back to 12 and I really liked the idea of a guy like Kyle Pitts for them. Uh, even, you know, if somehow Chase got to them, I don't think he would, you know, or maybe, um, you know, w- you know, given that the Niners moved up before them, you know, the Jamar Chase could have very well before so been there for them. Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Devontae Smith, whatever it is, I really like the idea of those guys for them. Really like Kyle Pitts, you know. Um, so kind of going back to 12, I guess it's you can't guarantee, guarantee anything when it comes to the draft, but I think it's a high probability that you missed out on all those guys. Maybe, you know, maybe. Scott like Devontae Smith's still there. Um, 
you know, but that kind of made it, that's kind of the negative you kind of took yourself out of, uh, cause you can get an elite guy at six still, especially with a quarterback going three for sure. Now, um, you know, so that was the downside of it, but at the end of the day, uh, the Eagles are kind of in, in a way in a rebuild mode, rebuild mode doesn't take as long as it you know, used to, I don't think. So it's not like, I'm not saying they're in a stage five rebuild mode. I don't know if that term even exists, but it's going to take five years, you know, nothing like that. Um, you know, and but I look at the value basically. What 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 stands out to me, what's screaming in my face, is the value they got. They actually got really good value here. Um, they they get a future first round pick. Uh, they actually get the next next year first round pick here, and a swap of picks there. Um, and usually going from you know six to twelve, if you were going to go back, that would usually give get you a. Um, a second round pick and not even a third with that. It would give you maybe a fourth and a fifth somewhere around there in terms of the value. The value goes up every year. So maybe we'll call it a second and a third. They get a first in a swap of picks. So I really like that value in, you know, their current state, uh, where they're heading in a somewhat of a rebuild, like we said. Uh, it kind of makes sense. And, then there, you know, again, maybe a guy like Devontae Smith, and some mocks have pits falling because it's hard to plug him in somewhere. If those, one of those guys still falls to them there, uh, it's gonna look fantastic. But even even if they don't, you look. I really like the fit of a guy like Jeremiah Uso Karamoa. You know, I thought that was a really good fit. And I, you know, I have, I've actually mocked uh, him to them at six in a past mock. And I do, you know, in a way, it doesn't really feel right because is he really gonna go sixth overall? I think he's like of a player. And that was kind of the problem with people. But I just love the fit so much. They need a linebacker so bad. Now they're at at the twelfth pick. You know, so maybe maybe it makes a little more sense now. You get that really good fit. So somebody like that. There's going to be several fits. Um, so I gave him an A minus. So overall, really good grades. There's some teams that kind of gave up value, got extreme value in ways. Um, I mean, Dolphins did it in two different ways. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there's some big positives here for all three teams. So that's why they, you know, essentially got the or ended up with uh, pretty good grades here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get working on a mock draft now because this changes a lot and it's definitely. Uh, definitely going to be fun, you know, to see the new type of uh, new uh, mock with the new order here, basically. Just wild what happened today. Um, you know, just kind of floored by the, the first trade. And then this happens moments later. It's like, did that, that really just happen? It's just, you know, crazy. So I love these. Love the NFL. Love love the NFL draft. Love when these types of moves go down. Hoping to see some more deals. There's still some big time players, you know, maybe like an Orlando Brown that still needs to be traded, perhaps. So we'll see what happens. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll break everything down on Twitter first and right here with the content on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you join us for all that, uh, subscribe, smash the like button, turn notifications on, check out all those links in the comments. They'll be useful. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.